Welcome to Judo for the World and to Uzbekistan. This historic country is teeming with ancient architecture and breathtaking sights. Its capital city, Tashkent, has established itself on the World Judo Tour over the last four years and now once again plays host to a Grand Prix. As always, Tashkent would welcome judo with an arena full of fans. It's two weeks since the World Judo Tour returned after the Olympic Games with a Grand Prix in Zagreb. And there's lots of new faces on show as a young batch of judo hopefuls seek to make a name for themselves. In Tashkent, we saw a youthful Russian women's team and took time to talk with their coach, Jean-Pierre Gilbert. Hungary's world number nine, Yo Abigail, would be hoping to make it two golds in two weeks. And of course, there were plenty of talented home fighters on show, all of whom would be hoping to see their flag flying highest on home soil. We start at under 70 kilograms, where one of those Uzbek fighters would be hoping to make history for the women of her country by becoming their first ever World Judo Tour gold medalist. Her name was Gulnoza Matniazova. A thunderous Uchimaka in her semi-final contest meant she would be in with a chance of glory on home soil. Slovenia's Anka Pogaknik would be her opponent in the final. Her left-handed Makikomi technique had caused all sorts of problems for her opponents during the day. After using it to take down Russia's Debrina, she followed through to secure a pin, which would leave her guaranteed a second World Judo Tour medal within one month after her bronze in Zagreb two weeks ago. For Matniazova, it was a chance to make a statement to the world on behalf of Uzbek women, that they have what it takes to deliver the results that the nation has become so accustomed to from their men's team. Your commentator is former world champion Neil Adams. Can Matniazova do it? She's going forwards all the time. Pogatnik has to defend. Sianagi this time. Pogatnik going for the Juji. This in golden score. One minute 27 already gone in golden score. Any score is going to do this. And the crowd will go. Can she be the first ever gold medalist from this world judo tour? Uchimata! Oh, yes, she can, is the answer. And the crowd erupt. They're on their feet here. What a crowd this has been. Amazing stuff here in Tashkent. And now, well, you can see it. Matiazova is the first ever female gold medalist. Uchimata did it. And she jumps up with joy. And she has done it. About a minute and a half into Golden score, she wraps up the arm, and it's Uchimata Makakomi, and she gets a second stab at it there. The support leg went central, and she gets the score. She wins the gold medal for Uzbekistan, and this absolutely paves the way for this Uzbek women's team. And for the first time, Matniazova will stand on top of the rostrum and salute her national anthem. The under 48 kilogram division saw the first of three goals for a young Russian women's team in Tashkent, as Maria Persinskaya came through the pack to top the podium. In the final, she defeated her teammate, Lilia Lotpulina, who'd actually looked the most impressive during the day. This coach, Igari, was followed by a great Hopping Uchimata in her semi-final contest, which gave her a place in her first World Judo Tour final. There, her compatriot was too quick for her. As Lotful in her attack with a foot sweep, she countered with a foot sweep of her own. Oh, Chigari. It scored Ipon, giving Percy Sky the gold and the bragging rights for the journey home. Next up for Russia was Anastasia Konkina at under 57 kilograms, who would take on Manon Durbach from Luxembourg in the final. Konkina's elimination saw her boast some lethal attacking judo, as well as some gritty counter attacks. In her semi-final contest, she too threw with Uchimata for Ippon to earn her first chance at World Judo Tour Gold.
Derbach looked no slouch herself as she sought to win a first gold for Luxembourg on the tour. With a minute and a half of the final gone, Konghina made her first move, scoring Elvazari with this impressive Kosotogari attack. She later capitalized on Derbach's desperation to counter for a second Rosari, winning the bout and adding a second goal to Russia's medal haul. At under 63 kilograms, Daria Daydova would round off a Tashkent treble for them as she defeated Croatia's Miskovic Hasanbegovic in the final. The world junior bronze medalist showed ruthless transitional skill on the ground in her quarter final contest, something which is becoming the hallmark of this young Russian team. In her semi-final bout, it would be a throw, this Kochigari that would win her a place in the final. Her opponent there would be dangerous indeed. The veteran Croat won two of her elimination contests with lethal groundwork skills, as she caught her opponents with strangulation techniques. After dispatching home favorite Tava Sharova, she was once again like lightning as she transitioned between standing and groundwork, leaving Slovenia's Leskin no chance in their semi-final contest. In the final, Daydova was able to weather the storm and picked up a lead thanks to this Ushimata for Wazari. It would be enough to see her crown Tashkent Grand Prix champion. A fantastic achievement for Russia's young women, with yet another of them topping a world judo tour podium for the first time. Surely the future is bright for these athletes. After such a wonderful performance from his youngsters, we caught up with French coach Jean-Pierre Gilbert to talk about his role in the rise of Russia's future stars. My name is Jean-Pierre Gilbert. I'm a coach for the national Russian women's team. I was a coach with the French national team for five years, and I worked with some of the women there. I had a proposal from Russia, which I found very interesting. In Russia, I have complete control to work and do as I see fit. I can intervene in training sessions and propose things as I like. Another important thing for me is the work ethic. They work very hard. Before training, during training, after training, they are always fully engaged and incredibly professional. This side really matters because I've always been like that myself. As compared with France, it's better for me. Before the Olympic Games, all training was undertaken together in one place. But we have now decided to separate the women's teams. When it was men and women together, there were lots and lots of athletes on the tapis. I believe that the women needed a more focused setting. This has allowed them to concentrate more in training, and we can see the results in competition. They are much more focused. They are much more focused. It's a very interesting group to work with because seeing the results from the Olympic Games has given great motivation. Russian youngsters really want to succeed. So now we have two teams, but always with separate training sessions. Before I arrived, Russian athletes were very good from standing and touching. But when it came to groundwork, it wasn't that they weren't strong. It was just that they weren't being pushed much. Personally, I believe that to be a successful judoka, you need to be capable of being strong from standing, strong in the transition, and strong in the movement. Russia was very good at 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 the movement. Russia Others with strength or holds. So there is a choice to be made. For me, the question is always, what do you want? What's your direction? Where do you want to go? What interests you? It's very important to focus on both phases of judo, standing and the groundwork, and especially the transition between the two, because that's incredibly important. For this event, we decided to put out young athletes, and they have performed really well, winning three gold medals. Je pense que ça va les encourager car c'est toujours important de faire des médailles et de gagner des grands prix. Ça va leur permettre aussi de se placer sur le plan de la rangée. Et pour nous, globalement, c'est un très très bon résultat. Alors la première médaille d'or que nous avons ramenée sur ce grand prix, c'est Kaya Maria. C'est une jeune athlète qui a gagné le championnat de Russie. 
et qui sont une athlète d'avenir. C'est quelqu'un qui, comme je disais tout à l'heure, qui est vraiment très, très sérieux, qui est vraiment très concentré et qui est vraiment déterminé dans ce qu'elle fait. Euh, la seconde, c'est Konkina, la Anastasia Konkina, qui est une jeune athlète aussi, qui a 22 ans, donc ils sont quand même des jeunes. Et cette She's athlète est toujours euh, à l'entraînement, par exemple, est très très engagée, elle est toujours à l'écoute de ce qu'on leur propose. Et on voit les résultats de tous ces championnats, parce que tout ce qu'on leur propose, elles le mettent en application. Alors, avec toujours un peu d'expérience à venir, parce qu'elles sont jeunes. Donc je pense quand elles ont acquis un peu plus d'expérience, ça va faire quelque chose de très très bien. Euh, Davidova euh, est une jeune athlète aussi, athlète. qui a eu des résultats très intéressants en junior. Et puis, euh, elle aussi, je, je pense qu'on peut la classer dans les deux, trois premières euh, de la Russie. En Russie, il y a beaucoup de monde, et il faut faire sa place. Et c'est ça qui est très intéressant. Et je pense qu'avec le nouveau système qu'on a adopté de les placer, de les faire s'entraîner entre elles, je pense que ça va donner des très très bons résultats dans les mois à venir, dans les années à venir. Je l'espère. The final of the under 73 kilogram category would see a dramatic golden score decided as Uzbek fighters Boboev and Farmanov battled it out for gold. Which one of them would be standing tallest at the end of the day? 25 seconds then into golden score. The gold medal at stake here. Who's it going to be? Any score will win this match. Boboev looking for the opening. He's got the arm over the top. Farmanov got the arm underneath. Uchimata from Pabayev. Oh, he made the mistake there. And what a situation from Farmanov. And Farmanov just directs it over with his hands. It's always the problem when you fully commit with the Uchimata, especially with opposites. Left against right. And look at that, the right-handed Uchimata. He has a second stab, then a third stab, and then Farmanov just sidesteps it and drives him over onto his back. He rolls him onto his back so he gets the Wazari, but any score wins the gold medal, and that is exactly what Farmanov has done. He rides this, he defends it. There's the third attempt, and Farmanov sidesteps it and then drives over. Look at the hand, the direction hand and the Kazushi hand in control right the way over to the end. It was a great score, great opportune judo there from Farmanov, and he wins the Battle of the Uzbeks. There were two female gold medals for neighboring Kazakhstan to celebrate in Tashkent. The first coming in the under 52 kilogram division as Toytakova secured victory with this Yuko over Uzbekistan's Keldia Rover in the final. Their second gold was taken by World Judo Tour veteran Isanova in the over 78 kilograms. In the men's under 66 kilogram final, Kazakhstan's Makhanov would have to settle for silver after he was caught for this Rosari by Japan's Takeichi Kengo, giving him a gold to take home to Japan. At under 81 kilograms, the Japanese had high hopes of a second goal, with Watanabe Hiato in fine form. This standing Moroti Sienagi Ippon, a real delight for judo fans. However, his opponent would have home support. Davlat Babonov also had a knack for the spectacular, as Azerbaijan's Ismailov found out in their semi-final contest. In the final, the pair cancelled each other out and it would be this scrappy Yuko splitting them. It saw Bobonov become the hero as he took gold to a rapturous reception from his countrymen inside the arena. And he was joined by the under 90 kilogram division winner Imamov, who strangled against Azerbaijan's Shabat was a highlight. The final saw him defeat fellow Uzbek Satarov with a Yuko to give the home crowd another gold medal to cheer. And the flag of Uzbekistan was once again flying highest for the under 100 kilogram category, thanks to Soyev Kurbanov's win in the final against Azerbaijan's Jalil Shukarov. The heaviest division was taken by Kazakhstan, Yerjan Shinkiev, winning plus 100 kilogram gold after this Uchimata Yuko in the final against Russia's Andrei Volkov. The women's under 78 kilograms would see a second outing on the World Judo Tour in under a month for Hungary's world number nine, Yo Abigail. 
after her gold medal two weeks ago in Zagreb. Her disappointing Olympic Games would be well and truly behind her if she could make it two from two in as many weeks here in Tashkent. Her semi-final was one of the quickest matches of the event. Kazakhstan's Zarina Rifova on the wrong end of this enormous Uchimata Ipok after just 12 seconds. It was a technique which showed just how powerful Yo can be when she's on form. Tasked with stopping the Hungarian's march to gold would be Kazakhstan's Albina Amangeldieva. Jo, going forwards, looking for her second gold medal in so many weeks. The winner in Zagreb just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, arm over the top, and she made a mistake there. Amanda Dileva just takes her backwards onto her side. She gets the Yuko. So, Jo will have to be careful there. She's a Yuko down now. And still looking to get that arm over the top. Arm over. Oh, and she's gone over again. A second Yuko given. Exactly the same thing. Tani Otoshi there. Amanda Dulieva takes her backwards. And she was waiting for it. So Jo has to do something here and she has to change it. One of the Yukos comes off. So it wasn't judged to have been onto the side. Now she changed it this time, changed the angle of approach, and she drives her over this time onto her back. Look how she changes it. And she also catches hold of the hips here, pulls them in, and she changed the angle of the drive. And this time she couldn't counter her. And Joe gets a wasari for that. And that was brilliant stuff. That was good change of direction and a good change halfway through the contest. We asked Neil to take us through Yo's final in our studio. Abigail Jo of Hungary is one of the top under 78 kilos fighters on the world circuit at the moment. But she does tend to come one dimensional and look for the big arm over the top in order to do her uchimata. And in the final in Tashkent, she made a couple of mistakes and got taken uh, for two Tani Otoshis. Uh, let's just have a little look at see those mistakes and let's see how she readjusted those mistakes uh, in order to get her score to win the match. So the first thing is that she wanted arm over the top, this is what she wants, big arm over the top, and then she hooks in for the Uchimata, and she likes to attack with the Uchimata controlling the head. But uh, Amangdalieva of Kazakhstan, she knew this. As the arm came over here, she was round the back, and she took her backwards with the Tani Otosh to score a Yuko. She did it twice, she scored two Yukos, one was taken away. So then what happened was Abigail Jo corrected it. She knew that she had to be quicker with the arm over the top here, and then she hooked in, but then what she did, she changed direction for the Uchimata. She changed direction, and because Amanda Dileva came over the top this time, when she came in for the Uchimata, she pulled the hips in, she drove, and she scored with the Uchimata to win the gold medal in Tashkent. It was great readjustment, it was a great change of direction, and in the end, it was enough for the gold medal. The first of our top three opponents from Tashkent is an absolute belter from Bobanov on his way to gold. After dropping underneath Kazakh Kamzin, he came back up to a standing position before sweeping out his opponent's leg. The result, a truly devastating Ipon. Next up is Makanov, who in the process of making the final, ended Slovenian Yerev's hopes for gold with this superb Sodi Surifa Negoshi. Wonderful stuff from the Kazakh, as Tashkent saw him recreating the form which brought him a silver medal at the World Championships back in 2013. In at number one is this amazing foot sweep from Uzbekistan's Satarov. It left his opponent completely stunned. And in slow motion, you truly appreciate the beauty of the technique.
great stuff from Satorov. The men's under 60 kilograms has been the home nation's most successful. It was in this division that Rio under 66 bronze medalist Rishod Sobarov claimed two world titles and Olympic bronze in London. And in Rio, his successor Uroz Boev also took a bronze. Hoping to follow in the footsteps of these heroes was the young national champion, Makhradin Tilovov. His day got off to a bad start, as he found himself down by a yuka to Russia's curtain. But Tilovov didn't panic, and when his moment came, he took it expertly with a skillful Kosotogari, which scored Ippon and ignited the home crowd. His opponent in the final would be Slovenia's Tobol, who would look dangerous on the ground on his path to the final, pinning Azerbaijan's Mamadov for Ripon at the quarter-final stage. In a tight matchup, the final saw the pair neck and neck as a tense crowd watched on. Neither could break the deadlock in regular time. So the bout went into golden score, sudden death, where any score would effectively be Ipon. Would Tilabov hold his nerve and become a national hero? Tilabov going forwards, two minutes into golden score already. Hicks got across. Tilabov now trying to attack with the Sangaku. They're both very, very tired here. Who wants it most? Tilabov just defending. Now what's going to happen? Oh! Kosoto's going to happen, and what he did there was he defended first, then he changed the direction, and look at the crowd on their feet here, and what a history in the under 60 kilos the Uzbek team have. Sokolov, the greatest of them all, of course, and now, of course, this young man, Tilabov, wins the gold medal here, and he does it in style. It was two minutes into golden score. He defended well, and then he looked for the right opportunity, and he took it. It was Kosoto. He changed the direction, and in the end, Trebok didn't have anything to give. And look at that. He is a hero. Shaking hands with everybody. He'll be signing autographs. And now, this is how he did it. He defended well. Trebok. Comes in for the Sodi Surakumi Goshi. As he comes up, well, he changes direction, Tilavov, and he directs him back with the Kosoto. He uses his hands to great effect, and he takes him flat on his back for the Ippon. It was great opportune judo. It was at just the right time, and it gets a gold medal for Uzbekistan. He has big shoes to fill, has Tilavov. We know that. But this is only the start. It's the first gold medal for him. We're going to see him a lot over the next four years of qualification for Tokyo. Can he carry on the Uzbek legacy at under 60 kilograms? And there is the great Sobarov handing it over. He hands the bat over and he says, now it's up to you. And it's the first time that Tilavol will be able to watch his flag go up there and hear his national anthem. And it is the absolute icing on the cake of a great event here in Tashkent. So that's it from Tashkent. A wonderful judo Grand Prix, which saw history being made for Uzbekistan's women, who now join the men as national icons after an action-packed stop on the World Judo Tour. Next time, we'll be in Abu Dhabi for a Judo Grand Slam.